hello, let's talk about metformin in pcos. we're going to talk about what it does why your doctor prescribes it so frequently to women with pcos and um the benefits side effects and some natural alternatives all right so first up metformin has been around for 30 years it's not labeled to treat pcos but it's been widely accepted in the medical community community as um a valid uh, prescription medication for pcos so it improves insulin resistance which we've talked about before um, it suppresses the liver's production of glucose and increases the sensitivity of your body to insulin itself in your muscle cells and your fat cells in your liver cells and it decreases the absorption of the carbohydrates you eat so all of those things are pretty good for addressing insulin resistance uh, the average dose is between 1500 milligrams and 2000 milligrams a day so in addition to lowering or improving your insulin sensitivity lowering your insulin resistance uh, we, patients with PCOS have experienced uh, improved cycles in fertility when they take uh, metformin and in some instances it can help with hair growth and acne and there have been studies reporting a uh, lowering of cholesterol if that's a concern for you okay one thing this that metformin is not is a weight loss drug there's um, really no evidence to support that it's going to significantly improve your weight loss and i mean there aren't any weight loss supplements more information there for pcos either so there are no pills for losing weight with pcos whether it's natural or um prescription right now um and uh let's move on to the side effects so the major side effect that's complained about the most is gastro gastrointestinal distress so bloating gas diarrhea a lot of women will take it for metformin for a while and kind of get over the hump and um, that symptom will go away some physicians prescribe the extended release version of metformin to help with the um, digestive symptoms however um, it's not really clear if the extended release works as well as the regular metformin so um you want to talk to your physician more about that if they're suggesting you go on extended release okay um also if you eat a high sugar, if you don't change your diet if it's still high in refined carbs and sugar you're going to get gastrointestinal distress because you're actually like feeding the, the the imbalance in your body you're making your insulin resistance worse while you're taking a drug to suppress insulin resistance and that causes gastrointestinal distress the other hey and listen up this is important the other side effect is that over a long-term use it can decrease your vitamin b12 in your body and create a deficiency so it's recommended that if you're going to take metformin that you take it along with um, a, a vitamin supplement that gives you a hundred percent of your daily recommended value of b12 uh, the best form of b12 to get is mes methylcobalinium i'll put a link to a product in the comments below <laughs> um, but if you're taking metformin you need to be supplementing with b12 period okay so um the reason physicians prescribe this is because one of the root causes of pcos it's widely accepted is insulin resistance and even though you may not test on a blood test as insulin resistant it is um, considered uh probably likely that everyone with pcos has like this underlying insulin resistance that's working against them um, there really aren't any good tests for insulin resistance as far as blood tests go a lot of them um, leave a lot to be desired so um, even if like your blood tests come back okay and you're not pre-diabetic but your physician is still wanting to uh, try out metformin um, they're not wrong or they're, they're not over prescribing necessarily just because they want you to try it out now there are three natural alternatives to metformin and all three of these in research studies have performed as well as metformin and um, generally have less side effects 
All three of these supplements can also be taken with metformin and they can be taken together. However, you do not want to start taking metformin and all three of these supplements at the same time because you might get too much of an insulin reduction, like an insulin resistance reduction, and you might become hypoglycemic. So definitely speak to a physician before you start mixing supplements and prescription medications. I'm not your doctor. So here are the alternatives. One is inositol supplementation. Uh, I recommend taking a 40 to one blend of D-chiral inositol and myo-inositol. Um, you should be taking about two to four grams of myo-inositol a day and 50 to 100 milligrams of D-chiral a day. The, I think that the best way to get that is through a brand supplement called Avocetol. Um, you can buy that at Theralogics.com. I'll have links to that in the comments below. I like that particular brand because it is third party certified by the National Science Foundation. Another option is N-acetylcysteine or NAC, N-A-C for short. And you would want to take 900 to 3 milligrams a day. If you are larger or overweight or obese, you're probably going to respond better to the higher dosage. And the third supplement is a Chinese herb called berberine. Um, 500 milligrams once or twice a day for eight to 12 weeks, followed by a one month break is generally speaking the um, recommended starting out dosage for berberine. Again, all three of these things can be taken in conjunction with, with metformin. Studies have shown that they work well together. Um, you can also take them on their own, but you want to talk to your prescribing physician before you start mixing these supplements in with your uh, medication protocol. I will have links to research below. It may be helpful to send those cited research links to your physician so you can have a conversation where they feel like they know where you're coming from. Um, so if you've taken metformin and you want to leave some comments below, please do so, so that women can hear your experience. Uh, personally, I took metformin for a while. I did not see a big difference. I didn't experience any side effects and it didn't, um, all of a sudden make, uh, losing weight or eating better easier for me. I ended up finding that Avocetol did a much better job of controlling my insulin resistance and also reducing my carb cravings and it was kind of a game changer for me in that regard so that's why i'm such a big fan of that particular supplement the inositol supplements um that's just my personal experience but i hope that everyone here if you've been taking any of these alternatives or metformin itself will share with the community their experiences uh, subscribe to my channel so that you can get more information about how to live an awesome life in spite of PCOS. Uh, have a great day. Thanks for being here.